Good afternoon, folks. We've gone over the scariest volcano hazards for the upcoming magnetic pole shift. Our number one risk at Campy Flegry is already getting active. But let's go ahead and discuss earthquakes a bit here as well. First of all, all of the usual places are likely to see big ones. All the heavy red zones on this map probably are not going to escape this event. But many people are wondering about other areas or which region should be most on alert. Obviously, as I said, those normal areas should be on alert when the big event happens, but they should already be on alert in general. They live there. There are others, however, and first on the list in fourth place is China. The fault running through it and to the immediate south has built pressure for a very long time, with far fewer releases of that pressure than in many other areas. It would also be one of the most devastating regions to take one if it was big, just given the population there and in the surrounding areas. In third place, we find the East African Rift. Now it's true. It hasn't taken major seismicity like the Ring of Fire has in recent decades, but it is spreading. It has very high potential, and chances for excess activity causing major crustal deformation are very high in the catastrophe cycle. Eyes there for sure. In second place, we have the North Atlantic. This includes Iceland and the central fault coming south to the west of Europe, and yes, that fault cannot be destabilized without a similar effect on the Mediterranean system. I would expect this region to get far more active than it usually is. But for the biggest risk, I come to the United States. True, I expect New Madrid and San Andreas to fulfill their expected damage, but nothing beats Cascadia. It really hasn't rocked in over 300 years and is able to produce the largest megathrusts of all of the faults in the United States. The most recent studies aren't doing much to quash my worries either, whether it discusses the potential for high magnitude events or the smoothness of the fault zone, which makes slippage more likely. It is nearly impossible for me to see this one staying quiet during the disaster, and that not only means tremendous damage from the shaking at the coastline, but a huge tsunami. This tsunami could be devastating, as the size of the likely slip zone in the coastal geography mean there would be pile-up effects of the wave that would almost certainly break through the low elevation regions in the mountain chain. I look at this, and I think about how many of you have told me you live in this basin area in Washington. The more I look at it, the scarier it is to me, just calling it like it is. Now, the yellow to brown areas do have a much better chance of staying dry, and while it won't be the crustal disruption slip tsunamis that attack this region, the Cascadia Fault basically means those in this region need to pretend like it is. Been thinking about this a lot the last few months, just decided I should say something. Subscribe, and I'll see you in the morning for The Daily Show. Be safe, everyone.